Hi there, my name is Conan Bergama, my channel. This is another set of my film reviews. Uh, I've picked some different ones here again. Um, I have kind of like not always gone for the old ones, not the old ones, the um, really low ones. Well, I have on this this thing, but they're, they're kind of going a bit differently. So I kind of enjoy, as you realised, any kind of films within reason. Um, well, I like any films, but for the reviews, only specific types. Um, so we'll get the ball rolling with uh, the first film and it's called Blood Monkey. It's a horror. Uh, it's got rating of 16 plus in Amazon. It came out in 2007. Uh, it's for about an hour and 28 minutes. The Amazon rating is 3.5. The IMDB rating is 3.1. Um, and I'll read these. Um, Amazon one uh, of the uh, of the blood monkey um, a renowned but mad professor leads a small group of American students into the jungles of Africa to investigate a remote tribe of killer chimpanzees rumored to be the missing link the good news is they haven't made the trek in vain that they found the monkeys unfortunately that's the bad news too especially when night falls uh, the director is Robert Young, who did The Haunting, and uh, publisher, sorry, the producer, I keep saying publisher, gaming head on. Uh, the producer is Charles Sal Salmon, who did Flawless, and music was by Charles Odin and Mark Ryder, who also did the soundtrack or the music to Croc, which I released in a previous video just earlier, so that was kind of cool. Um, and some of the main characters, so we have uh, F. Murray Abraham, who's Professor Hamilton, and he was in Homeland, and if you've seen that, it's Dar Adal, I can never remember his name when I was watching it, but it's Dar Adal, you know, the, the guy, guy who's into the Spec Ops stuff. Uh, Matt Ryan is Seth, and he's from Layer Cake, uh, I've seen Layer Cake, but I can't remember seeing him, but maybe I need to rewatch it. Uh, Laura Aikman. Uh, A-I-K-M-A-N is Sydney and she was in Liar and sorry if I'm not spelling this right Freesia which is F-R-E-I-S-H-I-A Bomman Berham B-O-M-A-N-B-E-H-R-A-M uh, is Danny and she was in Missing Persons Report it's also known as Instinct Primal in France and it was filmed in Carab Thailand. That's another Thaiish film I've seen. So I've, I watched one before, which was Croc. Believe it or not, was filmed in Thailand. So this is kind of cool. I, I, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being good. I don't know. So it, it starts off. It's quite interesting. You got these. Uh, the credits starting up, and you got these little um, like images of of. of um, I, I don't know what they are. I would just thought they're like invertebrates and like uh, crabs and things like this, but you can't really tell. It's kind of like um, like night vision thing, you know, intense colours moving around and stuff like that. But I kind of like that. I thought that was a nice, nice image. And as soon as I saw Professor Hamilton, which was the Dardal from Homeland, I was like, hey, he's been in other films, obviously. <laughs> Didn't think that old. Uh, it is set in the jungle, straight from the off, and as I always do, I don't give away the film, but I'll just kind of like say how, I, how it was when I watched it. Um, so we saw the first kill, now we never didn't actually see anyone die, well we did, but not anything too severe. Uh, but the old professor, professor found the remains, you know, some, some blood and guts just hanging around, uh, which was kind of cool. So then... We cut to the the team, the um, the small group of American students. They're by this plane or something, and they're going to get on this plane, and they're messing around with this damn camcorder. And every time this woman's recording there, it's got this box on the screen. And I thought, please, for the love of God, please let it not be one of these found footage films where somebody's rewatching this back. You know, you. Uh, <laughs> It's been done before. It started off on the Blair Witch, and everyone was like, "Oh, this is something exciting. No one's ever done this before." And then the F1 did it. Uh, oh, I don't know if it does. I don't think it did. Um, so, uh, so that's that. Um, now, we did see a snake in in the film, 
and the reveal. It wasn't like the ones from the previous film that I reviewed called Vipers. Uh, this lot actually was a proper snake, not some slithery thing. Um, and the, again, they're hiking through this forest. Um, they haven't arrived yet, but they're hiking through uh, with this camcorder. So she, this woman's holding it like it's her third eye. I thought I was waiting for it to trip over. Um, but it only produced now and then. It kind of likes it fizzles out after a point, thank the gods. Uh, then they do a bit of abseiling. Now, this is quite interesting because most of them didn't actually want to do this abseiling. They were like, oh, we're not going over there. We're not... And then they all did it. But they all knew how to abseil, which is quite interesting because I wouldn't have a bloody clue. You know, I've seen it in a film, but that's it. But they all seem to know what they were doing. And I thought, and you say, oh, they must have had training when they were at the top of this hill with, with the professor and that. It's like, no, no. They didn't have to finish training. Um, the female uh, partner of the professor was quite cruel. She was uh, she was yelling, kicking, punching, screaming. She wasn't very much of a motivator for anybody, but you know she was there. Um, and the professor actually has a secret plan for his students. I'll leave that out there. Uh, I also saw a killing just earlier. Uh, it was a pretty decent special effects one. It's you know the old type of stuff. No CGI, it was proper, proper, you know, proper good stuff, um, if you like hovers. Now, the monkey, you see it from his eyes, so it's like, you don't see him, you just see through his eyes, everything is red. So I'm assuming that's because it's blood, but everything's red, so he's looking through his eyes, and it's all red. Um, in Amazon, you've got an image of a chimpanzee, I would say. It ain't that. So just ignore that image. It's it, it doesn't look like that. Uh, but definitely not the bits that I've seen. At the beginning. Um, there's, there's a bit of the tent uh, campsite where they're all under in the tents. Obviously it's raining. That's actually quite funny in a weird way. It's it, when I was watching, I thought that would look right. <laughs> uh, but they explained it, and I thought, ah, okay. Yeah, that's actually quite good fun. Uh, then I did see the monkey. He, he's kind of like, I would say he's like an ape. If you think of a large furry gorilla. Although gorillas are furry, but you know what I mean, that kind of thing. So, I'd say the, the monkey on the, the, the thing isn't like that. It's not like a jump of chimpanzees. So, that's completely wrong. So, here's a question. So, you're out in the middle of nowhere, in a forest. You've got a human killing group of apes after you. Do you keep calm and try to move and get as away as quick as possible or do you yell, scream, argue, run and scream like hyenas and here's another one it's pitch black there's only two of you one of you has the night vision on the camera on so they can see who uses it? would it be the person at the front so they don't walk into the wall or the one at the back bet you can't figure out what that one is and it's just like when you watch anything oh, f -f 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 Anyway, it's a good ending, um, and I, I love budget films because they, they seem to push the boundaries, and it's a little bit different to mainstream stuff. So you know, but I mean, there are people in there that's been in normal films, so it's not like that. Um, but it's, it's a good ending, and again, I'm not going to tell anybody what the ending is. I'm not going to say it was good or bad or miserable or whatever. Well, I might do, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. But it, it's it's good. It's good. Anyway, I'm going to uh, review the next one in a minute. And uh, like I say, hopefully you enjoy watching this. Okay. Okay, the second film is uh, Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. It's a sci fi, um, it's a rated 13 plus in Amazon. It's an hour and 19 minutes. It's from 1968. Uh, Amazon have a rating of 4 and IMD a rating of 2.9. I'm actually going to read both review uh, synopsis for you. So Amazon is the first expedition to Venus discovers that the planet is inhabited by prehistoric creatures, man-eating plants, and a race of beautiful telepathic women. And the IMDb one, astronauts landing on Venus encounter dangerous creatures and almost meet some sexy Venusian women who like to sunbathe in hip-hugging, skin-tight pants and seashells, seashell and braziers. Uh, the director is Peter Bogdanovich, uh, who was in or did Paper Moon. Uh, the producer is Roger Corman, 
well known. Uh, one of his main ones is Science of the Lambs, and there was also Norman D. Wells, who's not done anything else since this film. Same with the music was Keith Benjamin, just this music. So some of the main characters we have Mammy Van Doren, who is Mona, and she was in Teacher's Pet. We have Jenna Dye, G E N N A D I Vermov, V E R M O V, who was Andre Fenu, um, and he's in quite a lot of other films, but they're all foreign as it were, so I can't really say them as such, I don't know what they are. Um, and then we have Vladimir Yemelanov, Y E M E L Y A N O V, who's Billy. And using King Lear, and the director uh, is also the narrator in the film. It's known as the Gill Women, G I L L, you know, because fish. Uh, it's, it's actually a Russian film dubbed into English, which makes sense when you watch it. Um, so this was actually out a year before the real moon landing. So that was that was kind of interesting. Uh, and the start of the film, they're, they're showing all these different types of craft. Uh, vehicles, buildings, all that sort of stuff to go to space, to go to various, I mean, not the, just the moon, but various other things. And it was going to full depth. And basically, that wasn't even the film. That was just like an intro to the film. Because then it said, and the film you're about to watch. I thought, oh, that's not even the film. That was just the intro. So that was, that was very interesting. I enjoyed that. Um, now, when you do watch on Amazon, because I'm pretty sure you will, Oh, by the way, all these films, as I always say, are free on Prime, uh, a, a video Prime thing, whatever it's called. Um, the video must be off at the original, like, not tape, the original film, because it kind of jumps about a bit and it's a bit kind of jittery, but that's fine. You know, it's a 60s film. Now, if you've seen the original Thunderbird, you know, the original... I think it's in the 60s, you know, the Thunderbirds I go, and there's little, little puppets moving around, but then you see the spaceships and all that lot. Think that. So that's the, the kind of thing. So they didn't have CGI or any of that stuff. They just built it all, little models. And that's what you've got. You've got those kind of things moving around. That's, that's kind of cool, but it's, it's, it's totally different. Now there's a robot called Robot John. Uh, he looks like from what I can see, the robot from the Lost in Space one, the 60s one. Um, so again, you've probably seen the, the remake, but if you look at the original, there's this weird robot walking around. Anyway, 10 minutes in, the bloody narrator. I, I felt like I just wanted to turn off at this point, because he was just banging on and banging on. Oh, and then I, they went off to this to Venus, and they went here, and they went here. And then we got in contact. Oh, great, okay. Uh, la la, and but you couldn't hear anything because he's talking over the voices of everyone else, and it's it's just. Ugh. And then when he said, "And here's three people on Earth, and one of them is me," I thought, "Great, he's going to shut up now." No, no, he carried on for another ten minutes. I'm like, um, that because it's the '60s, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's trying to be sci-fi, but you know, in modern days, it's not. Somebody's put an oscilloscope on the screen. It's, you know, that beep, 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 like you see in the, um, well, an oscilloscope, or you might see in a hospital, you know, the, 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 the beep thing for your heart rate, that sort of thing. There's a big, massive screen that's about the size of about 10 people on the screen. And everyone's watching it, to matter if you're the, the, you know, the space station or the spaceship or even these three dudes just looking at a screen. And then the narrator kicked in again. So, uh, anyway, we get onto Venus, and uh, <laughs> they get attacked by some reptiles. So basically, just think of a guy who's dressed up in a reptile, like a onesie with a hat, hat on, bouncing along, plodding along. <laughs> I just saw them, it's like, oh my god, what are these? And they're all being attacked by these these reptiles, and they're just like some guys walking around, like bouncing out, and they were the same height and everything. It was just, it was hilarious watching it. Uh, but then the robot started moving, and he actually caught, moved quite well. He wasn't like the one from Lost in Space, who just sort of shuffled around. This one walked and climbed. Um, 
And then there was the space car. Now that was that was neat. I don't. I'm assuming they use wires. Or something. I don't know, but it looked awesome. I bet Neil Armstrong wish he had one of those when he was on the moon. Um. So nobody seems to be completely unfazed by the fact that Venus has a shoreline and the sea. So there's like an ocean. Oh, is there any life there? Well, we don't know. Let's go and see it. I mean, as soon as you see the ocean, you would think there's life. Because if there's ocean, there's life. If there's water, you know what I mean? I mean, we all assume that if we're thinking the solar system has to live with water. But you never know. There might be some that gets killed by water. But the fact that it's there tells you there's something, you know, there. Um, obviously, they're starting to speak. And there the, the were... This is what I found out later on that it's actually the Russian film dubbed into English, which makes sense because I, could, I, I was watching it, I was thinking, this, it says it's English in, in the synopsis thing, but I swear it's dubbed. And it was. Either that or like I say, it was just completely out of sync. Anyway, uh, one of our intrepid explorers just killed one of the Venus gods. So, um, it's a brilliant way to make friends in a new world. Um, and then. A volcano erupts. Um, so Robot John's wading his way through it. The lava's pretty convincing for what it is. I'm, obviously it's not lava, but uh, I, I think it's like paint or something. I'm not sure, but it looks pretty impressive. Now, uh, the, the Amazon women, do they meet them? I'm not giving the game away, but they're a bit... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The, the money implant in the Amazon synopsis, yes, that was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. It was interesting. Prehistoric creatures, I think we saw a pterodactyl at one point um, and whatnot. But the women were just the telepathic. They were only telepathic to each other because no one else heard them except for the fact that they kept hearing this. And I thought, well, how can they all hear her? When they didn't actually, none of them opened their mouths, they just spoke telepathically. So how the hell did they hear any singing if they didn't actually speak? That was the thing that was never mentioned anyway in the entire thing, because of course they never met them. So I was giving the story away. <clears throat> uh, the, there was actually um, a funny bit uh, where they're on the beach, our intrepid explorers. You know, again, making having a fire and a bonfire, a bit of a barbecue. Um, and they get attacked by a creature. And I'm not not going to give it away, but it, that actually made me chuckle. I, I was quite laughing. I was laughing with them, and I thought that's that's very good. I enjoyed that. And then the ending. Oh God, I might be. So the, the ending was a bit. Mm, but the Amazon women weren't pleased with their current god, so they got rid of him and stilled a new one. And they chose well for the the one that they picked. You know, I, I would have picked that one as well. Um, so I I forgot to give the review of the uh, of the previous one. What, what was it? Blood Monkey. I would have given that like a maybe maybe even a four or five or something because it's quite decent for what I saw. This one, I mean. Uh, I think the fact that it's not English, don't get me wrong, it's nothing to say there, it's, it's, I don't watch English films, uh, I only watch English films because I watch a lot of films from a lot of countries, prefer them in their native tongue, so if I'm watching a film from Brazil, like for example True Delete, which is fantastic, I always watch that in Brazilian, I don't want it dubbed. Um, but <sighs> this was rumoured to be English. Even if you look into um, Wikipedia, it says it's an American film, but it's not. It's a Russian film dubbed into American, but unfortunately, it's, it, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not good. But I, I, I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd, three and a half, maybe pushing it. Yeah, I enjoy it. Not even even four. I kind of enjoyed it. It was just the fact that narrator. I felt like I just wanted to strangle him and he's the damn director. Probably just getting his name out there. Anyway, hopefully you'll enjoy watching that one. Um, I've got another one to uh, to review, so I'll review that in a minute. And, uh, yeah, okay. Right. OK, 
Okay, uh, now the next one uh, in, the, uh, in the part of the videos here is Jurassic Hunters. It's, uh, it actually is a TV movie. I thought it was when I first started watching it. It's an action film. Uh, Amazon have a rating of 15. So it'd be 15 obviously to watch it. Well, in Amazon it didn't really matter. Uh, again, it's on Amazon Prime, so it's free. It's for one hour and 28 minutes. It came out in 2015. Uh, Amazon have a rating of 3.5. IMDB have a rating of 2.7. <clears throat> Uh, so the Amazon synopsis is shortly after an injured cowboy Val returns home to make amends with his ex-girlfriend and father, a group of geologists set off a huge explosion at the local mine. However, instead of finding precious metal, they accidentally unearth hundreds of terrorizing and formerly believed extinct breeds of prehistoric dinosaurs. So the director is Ari Novak, and he was in Haunted. But directed haunted obviously publishers there's a few executive ones but uh, for the actual main producers Ari Novak is there again and there's Anthony Fankhauser F-A-N-K-H-A-U-S-E-R who produced Creepshow if anyone's seen that one music was by Christopher Carno and he also did the music for Derailed which I reviewed in the previous video so that's quite interesting now, the actors, there's some main ones, and then there's the ones that I would have thought were the main ones, and I'll explain that in a minute, well, when I will do my review. So we have Eric Roberts, um, who plays Trent Walker, and he was in The Dark Knight, he's an old school sort of guy, he's been playing it, playing, well, acting for years. Uh, Rib Hillis is Val Walker, and he's been in The Rookie. Casey Fitzgerald is Sky, and she was in Geek USA. And then the other two, I don't like I said, normally I have four, but I've got five here. We have Heather Foot, uh, F W O T E, who was Jenny, and she's only been in this film. And Kelsey Watson, who was Quaid, and he was in Wow, W O W. And it's also known as Cowboys vs Dinosaurs, which is why you can see that as the um, video title here. Um, but that was only released as Jurassic Hunters in the UK, so that's why it's showing the bus that for me. <clears throat> so, so we start off, and like I say, I found out it was a TV movie after. I tend not to read anything of these films until I start watching it, because I'm just curious. Uh, and I kind of felt like it was a TV movie, and I was right, so that was kind of cool. Now, so the, the were mining, and... Um, you got this woman, I can't think who her name was, who was explaining everything that's going on. Um, wearing dark glasses, you know, whatever. She's the only one wearing dark glasses. She was outside, thankfully. It wasn't a typical, um, you know, special special people. Well, not special people, what do you call them? Secret service where they wear glasses inside. No, that's FBI, you know, sorry about that. Um, so, anyway, they, they start off and they do this explosion to open up the mine to get this... I can't remember what the name of this mineral was. It sounded like something like uranium or it was iridium or something like that. It was, it was something that wasn't well known or even to exist. Anyway, they blew up this hole and it was a perfectly rounded, smooth hole with dynamite, you know, like you do. Um, and then some dinosaurs appeared. Oh, I thought it was pretty cool. So it started straight away. You know, it didn't, wasn't this typical, we have to wait half an hour for something actually to happen. It just died, I think it was like the first five minutes. So dinosaurs appeared and started causing havoc. So that was kind of cool. Uh, then we cut again to the scenery, and it was beautiful. I mean, um, I think I found out where it was It was filmed in uh, Montana, that was it. So, um, But it doesn't tell you until the end, obviously, because it's up in Montana. So if that's Montana... It looks beautiful to me. Um, anyway, so I just we, we saw the scenery. This guy, I think it was Val, driving in his car, his truck. Uh, then we gone back to the mines, and uh, like I said, this is in the first five, five, ten minutes. I've not given anything away, and so obviously they're starting shooting at the dinosaurs. But it kind of reminds me of when I'm playing Battlefield, and uh, if you've never seen that, I've got plenty on my channel. So basically, if, if um, somebody throws you a flashbang and you're blind, because that's what he does, you just think, well, 
there's an enemy in front of me, I don't know where they are, I'm just going to shoot. So you just stand there like a prat, shooting in any direction, and you haven't got a clue where you're shooting. And that's exactly what they were doing in the mine. <laughs> they had no idea what they were doing. You could see their eyes looking all over. Uh, for some bizarre reason, we then cut to uh, a lake, where four women are there, and they strip off to bikinis and dive in the lake. Why? Don't know. I ain't got a clue. So, some of the acting is pretty lame. Um, so, I watched... There was, a, there was a punch up after a meal. I'm not saying who it was, obviously, so it will give the game away as such. And a dinosaur came in. Um, but there was a punch up after the meal, which was pretty crappy. And then a bit later on, a dinosaur killed this dude. Not at the dino, but at just at some other place. And then the girlfriend just started screaming, which is fine. And then she just sort of strolled to the kitchen uh, uh, and picked up a meat cleaver uh, and then she died obviously and I was just thinking oh, come on put some put some passion into it um, the dinosaurs were kind of like those raptors from Jurassic Park you know the, the the ones that did all that whatever it was so they, they looked pretty cool um, the, the CGI was pretty darn good and it was also quite um, it matched the scene as it were, you know, it didn't, it wasn't literally, you could just tell, I mean, you could tell, but you know what I mean. So the, there's a throwing up scene with this drunk uh, in jail, now, it, that turns out actually to be, um, what's his name, Eric Roberts, who was Trent Walker, and I'm assuming that's the dad of Val, because it says that he goes to see his dad, doesn't he, so I, I never would have thought it was his dad, because he didn't call him dad in the thing. Um, but yeah, that was that was quite comical actually. It was enjoyable watching the throwing up scene. Um, so we cut back to the mine, and we got the the head honcho there. He's flown in, and he's doing his typical uh, corporate spiel. Here at Lando Mining, our priority is employee safety. No, it's not. Otherwise, that film would have ended. It's money. <sighs> So, uh, again, obviously people are dying, because dinosaurs are running around. So, don't worry about such trivial things as crime scenes, you know, keeping evidence, damping over stuff, fingerprints, you know, that kind of stuff. It basically, as I've just watched, the sheriff picked up a dead body to see what was underneath. Literally, they just arrived, the photographer was there, clapping away, taking his photos, and he just sort of popped along, lifted the guy up. Um... So, you know when you see some things in the films and you think, my good God, do people actually put this kind of stuff in the film? Yes, they do. So, you know when you're in a mine or you're in some place that you want to blow some stuff up and you don't know how to do it? You know, you want to make a hole, you want to blow up a building or something like this. So, what do you use? Are you using explosives or TNT? Well, how do you know where to look for it? Well... Apparently, you need to look for some small black barrels with the wor words explosive stenciled in white all along the side in large white layers. So they're, they're literally black barrels with explosive. Right? And then also, you need to wear complete white overalls with hard hats, even if you're in the middle of a field, middle of nowhere, and there's no one else around you. That's about all you have to do. So it, when I looked at that, I thought, oh, come on. <sighs> the acting, jeez, the, act, the acting. We're back in the diner. The raptor came in again. So again, you would assume that people would just run for their lives. No, they just get up, gaze around, think, oh, what's going on? Oh, look, somebody just died. And I'll just walk melancholy across here, and it's like... Run, run! I know you're old, but you can still run. But anyway, there were some running in the streets, uh, and the other death is, is pretty cool. You can see that on the trailer. You see them all running around, and the, the dinosaurs coming through the town centre. So again, I've not given it all away, but that's pretty cool. In fact, that's the only time when they actually do run for their bloody lives. Now, the main hero apparently is Val. It says here that Val. Um, Val returns home to make amends with his ex-girlfriend and father. Well, I didn't see him making amends with his father, or maybe I did, I don't know. 
Um, and it's all about Val. But he's hardly ever in the film. He spends most of his time in... in, a, in, a, in in, well, I'm not going to say where he spent most of his time, but basically, he's hardly in the film. And he appears towards, I don't know, as a hero, towards the end, I would say. The actual hero, in my mind, is Kelsey Watson. He's the black guy. And he seems to be the main hero. He's in it from the very, very beginning. In fact, when you see the trailer, I think he's the he's there with a the woman who's looking at blown up the mine. And he's at the very beginning, all the way to the end, and he's in every bit of it, shooting, he knows exactly what's going on, and everything. He's the hero, in my mind. But, you know, he's not the main character, so, what do I know? Maybe he didn't get paid enough. And, and the gay, the female. Apparently, the female on the image, when you look at it, you've got Val in the image. And on the left side, that is Sky, who is Casey Fitzgerald, and that's his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. So, of course, she's got top billing. Bill again, she's about as much good as a, as a fine a bin bag. She's, she's hardly ever in there either. So, who is it that I would say? Well, again, on the video cover, the one on the right, who is Heather Foote, who's only been in that one film, had more acting scenes than Sky. Well, than Casey Fitzgerald. A lot more. And she knew what the hell she was doing. She'd gone on with it. But again... Maybe they didn't get paid enough. Um, so, our hero, our supposed hero, uh, drove off somewhere, right, and needed to get back to town. So, he drove off in the middle of nowhere. You know, because that's what heroes do. And um, then he says, oh, I've got to get back to town. And he started looking underneath the truck. And he says, oh, the fuel hose is bust. And I just, because... It says here he's um, an injured cowboy, so he used to ride bulls. So I just said, literally out loud, huh, you're going to have to ride there. And literally, without fail, I heard this meh, and a horse appeared from nowhere. And I was just like, oh my god. I mean, of course, then he wasn't a failed cowboy, he just jumped on the horse, knew exactly what he was doing, and off he went. And it's just like, oh my god. <sighs> So the, the dinosaurs, like I say, they were pretty good CGI. Um, there were different types. There was the tall ones, the little uh, raptors. There was a uh, one with some sort of sh armor-plated stuff on the back. Um, I have no idea what these things are. I'm pretty sure people could tell me what they are. Um, but I still... The, the, the ending was quite good. It was quite different. And um, But I still think that the hero was the other guy. Um, once again you got three people who got top billing in Amazon and in IMDb and on the cover of the DVD. Although one was actually there, but I still think that the guy was the main guy. Like I say, Val was hard there and he was too busy doing what he was doing. Um, so yeah, so there we go. So that was the, uh, the review of uh, Jurassic Hunters. Um, so uh, so there you go. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching or listening to these. I keep forgetting that you can't really watch them. Uh, listening to these um, these these videos. Um, I do have more more coming up. So I was just looking at the picture there, figuring out what I actually did the audio for. Yeah, I've done that, that, and that. Um, I've I've got so many that I can pick. I've literally got all sorts um, I mean in this set I mean you've got what a horror a sci-fi and a, an action um, and it <laughs> I like them I, I, I thank you so much for the person who actually I know exactly who suggested it um, just find his name so I can actually thank the guy himself um, so yeah print is dead Thank you so much. So he, he suggested that I do this kind of stuff. And um, and I have. And I've enjoyed doing it. And I will keep on doing it. I've got so much that I want to do. Uh, the reviews will be either... This one's a long one. Some can be short. It all depends on how much I want to give away the film. Or not. You know, if the film's not that much. Um, but I've, I've got so many different weird ones coming up. Um, obviously, I have to watch them all. 
Uh, I've got all the stuff to do, the gamings and things like that, so this is just like a side thing. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. Okay, well, as always, thank you for, well, I'll say watching this, or the listening thing. Um, please subscribe my channel, and uh, okay, thank you, and goodbye.